It's one of the biggest days in college football. You got it. It's National Signing Day. This is close to being, remember this moment for Josh Allen. He seems to be a, a, a very dynamic back. He can definitely add something to, uh, to the running back room. Give Kentucky and Mark Stoops a lot of credit because he developed it. And you know everything you need to know about this young man. He was selected to play in the Army All-America game. Anwar Stewart, defensive line here, Kentucky. Signing day is here. Very excited about Tamawa from Middletown, Delaware. Saw him a couple weeks ago. He's getting here. Can't wait. Here we go. Very explosive kid. Long, athletic. As you see right here, a little club rip on this tackle. And then how he runs the hoop with a violent finish with the Tomahawk. Can't wait to get this kid on campus. Here he is again. Right? The ability to really dip that shoulder, take the surface away from that tackle, and now finish at the top of your rush. Really good job. Really good job. Here he is here, taking on the block right here. Okay? With lockout, got his eyes, got his eyes on his key, right? Violent release. Really good job. Now this kid right here, when you see this play, right? He reminds you of a number four that we have here right now, Josh Pascal. Okay, really good athletic kid, great kid, loves ball. That's all he talks about is football. Here he is here on the on the end again. Here he is right here with a little with a little club swim, right? And then look at the finish. One of the things that myself and Coach White has been talking about is finding an elite pass rusher. We think this young man right here can be really special. And he already has his blue on. Really good job right here. Really good job in the finish at the top of the hoop. Excellent job. Here he is, he's going bull. He's going to bull to counter and get to an edge. Really good job right here. Now snap to it. Good, really good job finishing. Finishing on the quarterback. Excellent job. Great thing about this young man also, you guys saw him in the three-point stands. I got to hide him from Coach White because he also can play outside. Right, because he's long, um, has excellent measurements. And as you see this young man's get off right here, how he gets in and then gets to an edge with that swim, and then look at the finish. Really good job. Here he is here again. Just look at the vertical push, all right? Look at the vertical push with extension, running his feet, right? And then getting off and making a play. Really good job, all right? Coach Collins is really going to love this young man right here, okay? He's going to really love him. Making that quarterback lob that ball up so those linebackers and those DBs can pick that ball off and run it back. We need, we need more of these. And this young man is really going to help us. Chris Collins, defensive backs, University of Kentucky. Uh, here we have Andre Stewart, young man out of uh, Georgia. Um, is currently graduating mid-year from uh, North Cobb High School. We got a chance to see him both at his former high school and his, uh, his current high school, North Cobb. Uh, but Dre is a, a tremendously savvy football player. Um, he's got a really good knack for finding the football. Um, got good arm length. You know, he doesn't have the height, but he has extremely long arms for his size. And you can see that here working the side shuffle. Again, good balance, has a good understanding of the position uh, uh, at the corner position. Again, you can see uh, just from the freeze frame, his arm length uh, for a guy that doesn't necessarily have the uh, the height, but he's a, a tremendous football player, a really good feel for the position. You see him working a speed turn here uh, from a off man uh, coverage. Great job snapping his eyes around once he does get transition uh, and then being able to go locate the football All right, and get that ball out. Again, we want hands-on ball, we want ball production, and Dre's shown that throughout his career, both at uh, North Cobb and Brookwood. Uh, here you get a chance to see the quick twitch, transitioning out, and again, ball production, getting hands-on footballs. Uh, that's really important. Uh, there's a seat belt. Uh, uh, that's the new trend with all the DBs now. Uh, here you get a chance to see me run support. Again, a guy that's not afraid to put his hat on you now. Uh, he's a physical football player. Um, again, we're really excited about adding him to our room. I think he's going to be able to come in this spring um, and add some tenacity, some physicality uh, to our room that we've definitely been looking for. Um, he's a, done a really good job 
in terms of developing his body, and he'll continue to do that. Again, you see the physical, the physical play that he brings. He plays with a little bit of an edge. Had a chance to go watch him play this uh, this season, and that's something that definitely stood out. You see the block destruction, getting hands inside, controlling the blush plate, snatching off and going to stack the blocker, and then being able to go finish on the ball carry. Uh, extremely excited about Dre. I think he's going to do an outstanding job, especially as the mid-year of uh, digesting our system. Comes from a great, great football background there in Georgia, and uh, extremely excited about having him here at Kentucky. Hi, I'm Scott Woodward, coach of wide receivers here. This is Brandon White from Cincinnati, Ohio, at Archbishop Moeller. Let's get to the tape here. Okay, Brand's on the smaller side. Okay, he's probably about 5'8", okay, 160 or so, but he does play bigger than he is. Okay, you can see him here getting up at the back of the end zone. They think very highly of this kid to go up and do this here. All right, what a throw by this QB and a great job uh, high pointing the football there by Brandon. Okay, Brand's an explosive player. That's why he's coming here. Okay, he's fast. As you get to see all these wideouts that we're taking here, uh, you can see one thing in common, that's, you know, that's the speed that we're trying to get here uh, back, at, back in Kentucky in, in the wide receiver room. So you see him here, you know, just going, going running, running underneath the post here, and you can watch the speed as he, as he just takes away from those guys right there. Okay, down here you'll see him take a jet sweep. Okay, you watch the speed here, just circles the defense up the sideline, there he goes. All right, and he's out the gate. Okay, another, another, uh, way you can see the speed that he has. All right, playing at a high level. Obviously, he plays up in Moeller High School in Cincinnati. It's big time football up there. Okay, another thing that we like to have him do here in the slot, running a fade route from the slot, slot position. All right, they can't get hands on. Okay, use the speed on the speed release to get going. Okay, love the way he tracks that football right there. Okay, runs underneath it. Great job there. Same type of play, just from the other side of the field. Obviously, uses the a little hezy release right there. DB's now able to get hands on, runs right by him. Again, does another great job of seeing the football in the air, tracking it. Okay, ball's thrown a little bit behind him. Not an issue for Brandon. Excited to have him here, get, getting ready to have him come up. Kentucky being the blue and white. Eric Wolford, University of Kentucky offensive line coach. We're taking a look at uh, Grant Bingham here. He's obviously from Kentucky. He's a guy that's a very good athlete. You can see here his size, length. Obviously, we're excited about him coming from a program that loves to run the football, loves to put his face on you, likes to get physical. He's a guy that will play at the guard position, so he's obviously playing tackle here, but we'll move him inside. You can see his foot quickness here. He likes to bury guys, put them in the ground. He has length. In the long term, he's a guy that will be able to project as a four position player. Uh, obviously left guard, center, right guard, and potentially right tackle to get you through a game. Those are the same kind of traits that we're looking for as far as players that can go on and play in the National Football League as far as having versatility. He's got a tremendous family, understands work ethic. He'll be a guy that'll be here in January and he'll have a chance to get in there and compete right away. Pass blocking will be something that we'll continue to work on because they haven't done a ton of that there. But uh, he's a guy that loves a run block, loves to put guys in the ground. And obviously you can see here just the power that he has in his body for a guy with his size. He's got a chance to be special and when he gets on people, guys will go to the ground. Brad White, uh, defense coordinator, outside linebacker coach for your Kentucky Wildcats. And really excited to show you Tyrese Fearby's film. Uh, I'm going to start with a clip that I think should get everybody jumping out of their seats. And well, there are going to be plenty on here that shows his ability to, uh, to rush the passer, to get after the quarterback. You can see the extreme arm length, uh, the, the get off. But this is, from a coaching perspective, this is what gets you excited. You watch him at the top of the screen. He's going to play with separation. The ball gets to the edge and then Watch him run right here. And he's, he's, I don't know if you can see, they slid him inside on this play. He's got the pink socks. This ball is going to break. And to be 220 pounds, 225 at this point in the season, and to just completely hawk this ball carrier, that's special. I mean, you don't get that much out of 6'5", 225. Uh, so in the effort and it's important to him. He, he wants to be great. You can see here at the top of the pocket, 
You know, he's able to bend, you know, close on the on this quarterback. He just happens to be so much taller than than a lot of high school quarterbacks. Sometimes they sort of slide, but you can see him still uh, scrapping to finish. Does a nice job here. You know, played a little bit of out of a three point at times. Um, you know, and he's able to shuffle right here. You know, we call it step shuffle. Play the quarterback and the wide dive right there on the little power read. Watch him violent on the finish. You know, he's been able to cause a lot of fumbles uh, in his career, especially over the last two years. Watch the, the, the bend here at the top of the pocket. It really makes it, if, if the tackle takes a bad step, they had no shot against him. Um, able to close on the quarterback again with some violence. You know, he, the way his frame is built, uh, you know, a lot of people are gonna make that, that Josh Allen comparison and, and he is built, you know, structurally very similar. Obviously, if he can, he's gonna make his own career. Look at that, that that's, that's special right there to be able to push your shoulder. And then a lot of guys, even when you push your shoulder through, they can't redirect out of that point. Watch him be able to redirect back up field, finish and watch the violent finish here. Again, you, you'll hear that term in this league, you have to be able to finish violently. Uh, you know, again, some things that we're still gonna, you know, he knows that he has to grow, uh, but you can see the the physicality at the point when he gets in with, with Coach Ed, we clean up some technique stuff. You know, just really excited about this edge rush class, you know, uh, and Tyrese is gonna finish off here. When, when, when he leaves this place, people are gonna be really excited that he was a part of the program. Anwar Stewart, defensive line coach here at Kentucky. Signing day, Quintel Jones, a nose tackle from Peach County. Can't wait to show you guys what this young man has. All right, here we go right here. Quintel, uh, nose guard, big explosive kid. One of the things that we look for uh, as a defensive line coach is uh, explosiveness and quickness. Here he is right here, runs a Noah stunt. Uh, really good heel line and finishes on the running back. Really good job. Here he is again. Big kid, can really move. As you guys can see, uh, has really good short quickness. Uh, the big man is very physical. And so uh, we're very excited. Can't wait to have him in blue and white coming up in a couple weeks. Early enrollee kid, which is also a, a big plus. Here he is right here. Just really explosive, running through the quarterback. Really good lateral movements here. Finish. Always looking for the finish. And as you guys see him finish, right, this shows how much this kid really loves ball. Really loves ball. Loves what he does. Uh, big physical kid. Really excited about uh, him getting here. Can't get here soon enough. Here he is in a three technique. All right, coming out of his hips, striking that poor little guard, knocking him back with extension with his eyes, with his eyes on it, on his key. All right, locates the ball carrier, violent release. Really good job. One more time. Strong kid. Does a good job of just taking the middle, middle push right here, right? And then he's able to get off, and then the big man can run. Look at him run. Really good job right here. Coach White always talks about pursuing to the ball. This is one of the things that as a defense alignment, you got to be able to run in this defense. Really good job by him. All right, here we go. Right, good explosiveness. Coming out of his hips, getting vertical. Run through the strike zone. Really good job. And the fumble. Really good job by him. Chris Collins, defensive back coach, University of Kentucky. Uh, here we have Alex Safari. Um, by way of Ohio, um, this young man really, really, really excited about him. Extremely long, athletic, um, can play really any spot in the secondary. Um, playing corner here, you see him playing off, right? Being able to see the quick game, finish on the football, really athletic play. Putting his hand down, being able to stay up and then go make something happen when he gets the football. Uh, Lakota West, man, a tremendous football program. Uh, comes from a great pedigree. Um, again, you see the length. We wanted to address that in this class, ball skills, extremely athletic, and not only just athletic and fluid, but he's extremely physical at the point. You see him knocking guys back and getting excited about it. 
Alex is going to be a, a big time contributor in our secondary. Again, we talked about position versatility, the length, the ball skills, the fluidness. You see him playing off, being able to go transition and get the ball off the receiver using that length. That's something that, again, Coach Stoops, uh, uh, Coach White, myself, we wanted to address in this class, and I think we've done a great job at that. Um, Alex is going to be a tremendous uh, a contributor early. Um, again, you see the athletic ability, him playing a little Wildcat quarterback, able to get to the perimeter, use that length, use that strength uh, to get in the end zone. And now you see him playing a little bit of nickel as well. Again, the physicality coming off, the instincts being able to go strike, uh, knock guys back. I think he won the hard, the hard hit award at his high school um, um, seven times this season. So a guy that's excited about playing the game, uh, not afraid to be physical, but he has the athleticism to make plays on the football um, and really, really excited about what Alex will bring to the secondary here at the University of Kentucky. Hi, I'm Scott Woodward, coach of wider series here at UK. Here's Jordan Anthony from Tylertown, Mississippi. Okay, one thing again you'll notice about Jordan, elite speed he's bringing here to campus. Um, last year he was clocked in at 110-2-3. All right, this kid can absolutely fly. Recently up on his visit here, uh, he told me he's run, I asked him what he's gonna run this track season. He said, coach, I'm running a sub 10. So obviously that's elite. So if we can do that, I'll be one, uh, one good football coach. Okay, here you see him uh, returning punts. That's something we need here. Here he goes. Not a great punt, taking it from off the ground. And there he goes. Obviously, when you watch him run, everything's easy to him. Okay, he's just strolling right there. See him at the top running a nice little corner route. Okay, or a pylon to the back pylon of the end zone, going down to get it. Okay, smaller kid, but can make all the, all the catches. Has a great catch radius. Down here running the post. Okay, and you can just see him take off right from the, right the get-go, from the line of scrimmage, running right by this DB. Okay, great stride, knows how to run, goes and tracks the football in the air, making plays. Here he is, a little defensive flip. Okay, small in stature, but not afraid to lay the wood. I'm sure Coach Collins would like that as well. You know, when you're, when you're watching these guys too, it like, you like to see this type of, type of dog in the kid, especially a wide receiver. You know, he's, you, you see a kid playing defense, playing, all, playing punt return, all that. That just makes you like the kid even more. And that hit right there, he's a dog. See him down here in the slot, catching a little wheel route, rising up to go get it, puts his foot in the ground, makes somebody miss. Okay, big time play right here. Okay, turning a negative into a positive. Looks like it's about to be a two yard gain on the line of scrimmage. Makes a couple guys miss, turn into a first down. Chris Collins, defensive back coach, University of Kentucky. Uh, here we have Elijah Reed, uh, local, a local product, uh, right down the road here in Louisville. Uh, really excited about Elijah, man. Again, we talked about the length, wanting to be able to address that in the secondary here at the corner position. Um, and Elijah definitely has that. Uh, another young man that played the offensive side of, of, of football um, up until his senior year. And, uh, and he really took hold of playing the defensive side of the ball. You see him being physical. And sometimes, you know, when guys transition from offense, you're not quite sure how physical they're going to be. Uh, Elijah came to camp with us, and, um, and he said, Coach, what do I need to do to earn scholarship? And uh, we gave him a list of things we need to see on the senior film. And uh, he did those things, right? And so that tells us everything we need to know about his work ethic, right? About his mentality to get better. Um, and really, really excited to add him to the room. Here you see him playing press at the line of scrimmage, staying square, um, able to work through the upfield shoulder and then work to the low hip to go finish. Again, you see that length, uh, being able to get in windows and disrupt the timing of those receivers. Really excited about him again. He's another guy that's just kind of scratching the surface at the position. Uh, he's going to continue to get better, continue to grow. Uh, has a tremendous upside about him. Um, and you can see he plays with a little grit, plays with a little nasty to him too. So excited about him. Uh, great family. Had a chance to spend a lot of time with him and talk with him throughout this process. Um, and so it, really, really excited to have him in our room. Here you get a chance to see him in phase, right, getting to a look lean scenario and then going up and attacking the football. Um, and so we'll continue to grow and continue to get better. Um, um, but again, a young man that's passionate about the game, extremely intelligent, um, physical, and he has all the tools to be a really, 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 really good one.
I'll see a chance again. Pulling the trigger on the perimeter, getting guys to the ground, playing fast, playing confident, um, um, and, and playing violent on the finish. Really excited about Elijah. Coach Morrow here, uh, recruiting coordinator, tight end coach. I uh, want to talk about this young man, Josh Caddis, out of Cincinnati Molar, one of the traditional Division I schools in Ohio, but also in the, in the country that produce tight ends. What we liked about Josh that when you know when you watch him here, you know he has real soft hands, uh, can run after the catch, but he's a very good inline blocker. Uh, what we want to look for this year in a class with a tight end, we already have some athletic guys like Isaiah Cummins, who's still like a red shirt. He'd be a red shirt sophomore. You got Dingo, you got Trey, uh, uh, Trayvon Morgan. So we needed a guy, even though you can see out here on the perimeter that he can catch and do some athletic things. He's really a good inline blocker. Uh, that's, a, that's the number one thing I fell in love with him at. Uh, his dad played for the Cincinnati Bengals as a tight end, uh, played at the University of Michigan. So this kid was kind of polished. You can tell when we watched this film, he was polished in how to play the position. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going on about this, but I don't, you know, I don't know if we have any things up here showing him his blocking, but his blocking was like second to none. Here we go, see, our, our credits for our video people. Look at this guy, he runs, he finishes blocks. He's a nasty guy. His senior year alone before he got injured, I want to say he had about 26 knockdowns that were like actual point of attack blocks. You can tell that his dad, you know, somebody else coached this young man coming out of high school, come, coming out of middle school, because this kid really technique strong in his blocking. Uh, and this lead, the way we run the ball in Liam's offense, we're going to run and throw the ball. But you, in, in this room, you have to be a guy that can block first. And this is what I, I looked at over 10 tight ends when you narrowed it down. This is what I liked it. And uh, I mean, this kid gonna be a good addition to us. He's gonna be a nasty person. Kind of like his teammate we have here now, Brendan Bates. You know, even when Brendan came out, he was a more complete tight end. And uh, it's really gonna be a blessing to have this young man. Come from a great family. Getting Josh Callis was very good for our program. Eric Wolford, offensive line coach here at University of Kentucky. We're gonna take a look here at uh, Nick Hall. Nick is a guy that uh, has a tremendous amount of ability. You can see here to lengthen his body. He's six foot seven, 315 pounds, explosive. When he makes contact with people, they go to the ground it's very easily. Obviously, you can tell that by the film. The other thing that's really impressive with him is, is he has tremendous length. So he can play the tackle position. He's got a great lower body. He has the ability to change direction. He likes to run block. His dad obviously was a great football player here, so it means a lot to him about coming here to the University of Kentucky and continuing on that tradition. I really feel like sky's the limit with Nick. Uh, he's a guy that I think has a tremendous amount of growth ahead of him as far as his potential on and off the field. He has quick twitch, he can change direction. And you know, obviously in high school, they played him some at defensive line but he has the traits that we're all looking for as far as a guy that has the ability to play at the next level. And if he continues to develop in the next three to four years, I think he could be as good as any probably offensive lineman that we've had here. And that's an exciting thing for the future here at the University of Kentucky. You see here his ability to get out on screens, play in space. That's not always easy things to do for offensive linemen uh, at any level. Anwar Stewart, defensive line coach here at Kentucky. And we're, today we're going to talk about Deion Walker, 6'6", uh, 6'7", six, 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 about 345. Big, long, massive young man, very explosive. Uh, as you see right here, he's playing a three technique, uh, getting off the ball, very explosive, great lateral movement, gets vertical and finishes on the quarterback. The one thing that I really love about this young man is this. Look at the finish on the running back. Very violent in his finish. Here he is here, he's playing a zero technique plant, meaning he's playing head up on the center right here, okay? Watch as they slide protection, okay? He back doors, okay? He back doors and gets vertical, right? His wingspan, he has to have at least a seven foot wingspan. This is a big man. Look how he comes and he matches the hand of this quarterback. And I mean, just finish, just finish. Very athletic, very active. I'm gonna tell you guys something. The one thing that's really special about this young man, he's big, he's athletic, but he also has a motor. 
And so when you guys watch this young man move, right here we call this a knob, okay? Does a really good job, right? Getting, getting vertical off movement. Right now as he gets up, look at his wingspan. Watch the big man get up, okay? When you see this, what the quarterback sees is darkness, okay? He sees darkness and great finish on top of the quarterback. Really, really excited about the future of this young man. Can't wait to get my hands on him. Watch him here, he's in a shade. Reminds you of Marquan uh, McCall right here. As he gets vertical, he attacks, he attacks the, uh, the V of the neck, okay? And now just flattens it out and makes the play. Very dominant big man. He's one of the few guys that uh, we haven't had around in a long time. He's gonna remind you of a uh, bigger athletic Marquand, McCall, or Quentin Bohanna. I think this young man will end up being one of the, a great one here um, at Kentucky. Watch him right here, okay? I don't, I don't coach the spin on the run game, but on this one, really good job getting back square and finishing on the running back. This is the thing I like. When you tackle, when he tackles and he puts his hands on the running back, there are no yak yards. See that? He stops him right, he stops him right there on the spot. Very excited about this young man. Can't wait to get him on campus. Uh, Jackson Smith is, I think, will be a great asset for us. He's one of the few specialists that can do everything. Um, he can punt, he can kick off, he can kick field goals. So I think that's a plus, especially here, because you can figure out what he does best and plug him in in that spot. And you know, the other thing I like is he has pedigree. His father played here um, back in 1999. Um, and just having someone who's been around the program and wants to be here, wants to be part of what we're doing would help. Uh, there's a couple things that make him a really good kicker. Um, first and foremost are kickoffs. Uh, you watch him in games, most high school kids struggle to get it to the goal line. He puts them through the uprights, um, five, which would be five deep for us in college. Uh, I know the last two times he went to a pro kicker camp, he tested out perfect. Um, which means he made every kick with a certain operation time and a certain height through the uprights. So he can get elevation, which helps so you don't get kicks blocked and so forth. Actually, Jackson, what was unique about him and what I really loved about him is the fact he's not just a specialist. He played some wide receiver early in his career. Um, this past year for senior year, he actually started at outside linebacker um, every game but one. Um, he started at outside linebacker for them wasn't afraid of contact, actually had an interception in a game, um, run down and made tackles. So, you know, joking with them, if they're like, hey, if you don't kick a touchback, I know you can at least run down and make a tackle and make sure it doesn't go. So, you know, I mean, I think a lot of that is that he ran track um, last spring. Um, he's just an all round athlete, loves the weight room, loves running, loves lifting, not just a kid that played soccer and only kicked in his life. and. That's about it. He can do pretty much anything. Hello, I'm Frank Buffano. I'm the safeties coach here at the University of Kentucky. Today, I'd like to talk about Kobe Albert. There he is, there's Kobe Albert. He's there in the slot, right? Obviously where the arrow is pointing. Uh, what, what I like about this young man is I like that he's able to pull his trigger. He goes and makes the tackle. He's a very versatile player here. You see him, once again, great knee bend, right? Reads his key, triggers goes and makes a tackle for loss. Once again into the boundary here, playing more of a safety. Just like the way he elevates and goes and attacks the ball in the air. The kid's got great vision, great awareness, great ball skills, and great body control. Here's him at wide receiver. Very versatile player, right? Smooth, great ball skills, and can elevate. I believe he's got close to a 40 inch vertical. And he plays with a lot of passion, as you can see there. Down here at the bottom, coming off of a corner pressure here, right? Just creeps into it. Once again, attacks the block, comes off, makes the tackle for loss. Up top in the slot, off a of fly sweep. Just shows some of the elusiveness, some of the smoothness, hard to bring down, keeps his feet moving. 
really good player. Hi, I'm Scott Woodward, coach of wide receivers here at UK. This is Tavion Robinson, from transfer from Virginia Tech. Let's take a peek at him. Okay, off a little play action here. He's in the slot up top. Gonna run a post over the top of these safeties. Great job sticking his foot in the ground, going to tr track the football in the air. One thing I love about Tay, finishes in the end zone. Okay, great job there. Big time explosive. Here he's at the top of the screen. All right, just running a little goal line fade. Works the, de uh, the defender right here. Ball's pretty good on the outside shoulder. Great job flipping his hips, staying connected. Takes it one-handed right out of the air. Okay, that's a big time play. Another big thing that we love about Tavion is his ability to play bigger than he is. Okay, he's probably about 5'10", all right, but he plays bigger. Okay, makes a ton of contested catches. Okay, as you see here against West Virginia, down here in the slot, just gonna run a little slant and go right by this safety right here. Another contested catch in the, bit, in the back of the end zone. Love the way he goes up and gets it. All right, another big time catch there. Another ability that he has is to make plays in space. Here they are giving him a little jet sweep. Stays in bounce down here at the bottom of the screen. Makes a couple guys miss. Okay, be special with the ball in your hands. That's what we ask our guys to do. And there he goes. Up top in the slot, just run a, a slot fade right here, what we call a stomp route. Give the DB a little hezzy and run to win. Great job tracking the ball. That's another, he's, he, can, he can make plays when the ball's in the air. He's very good at tracking the ball in the air. Okay, look at him adjust, flip his hips. Puts the ball between him and the DB. And there he goes. Big time catch right there on the sideline for a big game. Okay, the other special thing that we love about Tavion is his ability to return kicks. All right, here he is. He's one of the top uh, punt returners in the country last year, if not the top. Okay, here he is against uh, Richmond. Okay, making a, everybody on the field miss and then finally just having a nose for the end zone. Okay, he did this a, a handful of times last year at v, uh, Virginia Tech and we're just excited to have him. Eric Wolford, offensive line coach here at University of Kentucky. Gonna take a look here at uh, Tayshawn Manning here, here at the right guard spot. Uh, wearing number 56, he played at Auburn. He's a guy that's six foot four, 335 pounds, loves to run block. I think the most intriguing thing about Tayshawn is, is he's only played offensive line for two years. He was recruited to Auburn to play defensive line, so that gives you a little bit of idea about as far as his skill set. But you can see here at the second level, he takes this linebacker here and walks him off the ball, dumps him, in, dumps him basically off the ball about 18 yards. Here he is playing left guard against Alabama, and all we, we all know Alabama has a, a decent front, and you can see here that Tayshawn has the power when, he, when they work combination blocks, once again moving guys off the spot, tremendous effort, you can see the length in his body, he's a long guy, he has tremendous power, he'll have one year to play here, he's played left guard, he's played right guard, he's played in this league, which is an important uh, trait to have as far as being able to step in here and have a chance to, to be a difference maker. You can see him pull here and kick out uh, the end man line scrimmage. Obviously we run some similar type concepts and you can see here on contact the power in his body that he has the ability to move people off the spot. Uh, you've heard me say that before. That's a, a great attribute to have especially at this level playing in this league which is the closest thing to the National Football League, the SEC is the premier conference in the league. And as far as football goes, and you can see here that he's played it and he's done well and played dominant football at the a guard spot. Hi, I'm Scott Woodward, coach of wide receivers here. Uh, this is Barry on Brown from Pearl Cohen High School in Nashville, Tennessee. Let's watch some tape. Okay, here he plays all sorts of positions, wide out, running back. Here's Wildcat quarterback. And the, the best thing about Barry on, he's just explosive. Anytime you put the ball in his hands, it could be a crib shot. Okay, he's fast, he's explosive. There he goes, 93 yards for a tutty. Again, playing some quarterback. You never know all 53 and a third yards that he's gonna use. He's the ability to put his foot in the ground and make people miss, get vertical up the sideline. Something I don't think we've had here at Kentucky for a while. Here he's at wide out, just throw him the ball. Get the ball in his hands, he's a ball in hand type of guy. Get the ball in his hands and let him go to work. Down the 
sideline he goes. Up top, playing some wide out. Another screen. I mean, this kid is a, is a vertical deep threat. He runs 10-4 in the 100 in track. But again, he's the reason makes him so special is just, you know, he, you can put the ball in his hands on a screen in the backfield, hand the ball off to him, and he can make people miss, and he's gonna, he's gonna take, he's electric. He's gonna, every chance he gets, he's gonna try to get in the end zone. There he goes again on a little zone read as Wildcat quarterback. Put his foot in the ground, go. That's what he does. You talk to Barry on, he'll just tell you, just give me the ball. Watch what I do with it. Wide out. One of the first things when I put on his tape, the very first time, the, the, the first thing I noticed was his, his explosiveness off the line of scrimmage. You can kind of see it here, right here. He explodes off the line of scrimmage, attacks the DB's leverage real fast. All right, and then he has the ability, right, play the ball in the air, keep his feet in the in bounds, gets two feet in right there. That's good in the NFL. Touchdown. This is Dane Key from Lexington, Kentucky. Frederick Douglass High School. Let's watch him. Some of the things I love about Dane, man, he, he's a great route runner. You can see him here, put his foot in the ground on a goal line slant. Okay, one, two, three, put his foot in the ground, makes the DB look silly right here. And he's got short hands. This man catches anything in his radius. He's one special wide receiver that I'm excited to have in my room. Here they're throwing him a little screen. Does a great job here catching the ball and getting vertical real fast. Get inside, then back outside. Okay, he was obviously coached pretty well in high school. All right, this is what you teach on a screen play, right? You want to catch the ball, then you want to catch, get inside, and then back outside. Stay away from the big bad guys. Up top, a screen again. Again, getting back inside and get back and outside, back on the tick marks. Put his foot in the ground, go score. Okay, here's another a, a deep post shot, running away from the coverage. <laughs> official fall. Okay, one thing he is is sure-handed, right? Every time you throw him the ball, you know, he just makes plays. Okay, he can go up and get the ball. I think we're going to see that here in a second. But when that ball's in the air, it, it's, it's one guy's only ball, and that's Dane. And I love the passion Dane plays with each and every time. Here you go here, watching Moss that kid. I mean, he's, this kid's special. I'm excited to have him. I love the relationship we already have together. Here he is over the middle. Going to make a big catch over the middle right here. Go up and get it. Okay, not afraid to go over the middle of the field, which is huge to have in a, in a college wide receiver room. Every ball is his, and that's what I love about Dane. How you doing? I'm Liam Cohen, offensive coordinator, here to talk about quarterback Destin Wade. First clip that we got here. Uh, this is Destin running a little bit of a uh, pin and pull lead scheme right here. Um, just being his uh, himself, being the athletic player that he is, uh, a total freak athletically, can stick his foot in the ground, um, brings a whole another dynamic of running the football, which is great to have. We know how successful uh, Will Levis was this year, hopefully running the football, and Destin continue to do those things for us. Run football is a great uh, intangible to have for the quarterback position. Uh, this is what we're really looking for, though. You see Destin do a great job right here. Here, holding the post safety with his eyes, knowing that he's throwing the one-on-one -on -one down here to his buddy. Catching the go ball in stride. Um, that's exactly what we're looking for from a standpoint of the quarterback's footwork. One, two, three, slight hitch, letting that thing get up and down, catching the ball right over his shoulder. That's a big time throw and catch. That's exactly what we're looking for. All right, send a little bit of motion to three by one. Taking a nice smooth drop. You see him drop the wheel route right here in the bucket. They're running a little double post wheel concept. This is a great throw, shows unbelievable touch. This is exactly what Destin has shown uh, when he came to camp this summer. Did some really good things throwing the football. But you see him take a nice smooth drop, letting the wheel route develop, probably taking a peek at one of those post throws. And then you see him drop this thing right in the bucket over the shoulder, big time throw and catch. Another great example of Destin using his legs here. 
a little bit of a power read concept, something that we've utilized throughout the season, and then just him being him. I mean, this is what you see every single game when you turn the film on, on of Destin Wade. It's him making people miss, competing his tail off to the very end, leader, all the little things that you look for from a quarterback standpoint. This is what we're looking for. And then again, similar to that double post wheel concept we just saw a minute ago, now he's alert in one of those posts, protecting his receiver with the throw. Some people might say that that's a behind throw. That's not. He's protecting his receiver with this throw, making sure that he doesn't run him into the post safety, putting it just on his back shoulder for the kid to make a play. Does a great job, th great throw and catch. Um, really protecting his buddy with that, that play. And Destin's a guy that the intangibles, all the little things you look for, for in a quarterback, he brings to the table. Leadership, type of caliber person that he is, student, all the things that we want and look for from a quarterback standpoint off the field and on the field is what Destin Wade brings to Kentucky football. Brad White, defensive coordinator, also the outside linebackers coach here at Kentucky. Couldn't be more excited about the, the two outside linebackers that we're bringing in this class and starting here, uh, you know, with Keaton Wade. Uh, you know, been recruiting Keaton for a long time. You can see right here on this first clip that he has. I was actually at this game watching this play live and in person. And to understand how much of a game changer he is, there, there's some momentum here by the other team. You can see the ability to go up and get the ball, high point it, and then go 99 yards and just completely change the ball game. He's big, he's long, he's athletic. You'll see as we go through these clips here, you know, obviously love the, watch the great get off, you know, really reminiscent of some really great edge rushers that we've had here. Watch the power at the top, really a violent finisher, you know, really excited about what he brings to the table, both in the box and out of it. Uh, you know, and, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a guy that can do a lot of different things. Watch the close here. We, we talk about top of pocket. You know, a lot of people can get to this position, but now do you have the burst to finish? Watch him close. Causes a lot of turnovers, both on the quarterback, on the running back. You can see the interception from the previous clip. I mean, he's just a fun, exciting player. The, and the, the great thing, he's really just a phenomenal young man. He's, he just loves to learn. Watch his hands. Watch him play with extension. A lot of big, tall guys, they don't use it. He extends. He separates. And then watch this finish. Watch the close. Violently finishes. I mean, that poor, that poor quarterback had no chance right there. All right. Here he is on the edge again. This, this, I, I remember watching this play this year, and it's just reminiscent of Josh Allen against Central Michigan back in 2018. Really got to get our program going that year. Uh, same deal here when he closes off that backside and chase. I mean, we, Keaton's got one of those highlight films you could just sit here for an hour and watch clip after clip, and that's just as a senior. You watch him here, block a punt. Watch how easily he can scoop and score. A lot of guys really struggle. They kick the ball. Um, just his talent uh, is through the roof. Expect big things right here. Watch him. He's going to slide in the apex. You know, he's got the ability to play Jack or Sam for us. Watch him steal the football here from the running back. Again, game-changing play, and then he can take it to the house. I mean, he's and, – and, again, this is the kind of teammate he is. Watch him give it to a teammate that he – you know, he scored plenty so that they get an opportunity to score a touchdown in their high school career. I mean, do you – He's an unbelievable young man, an unbelievable talent. Can't wait to get him in. Chris Collins, defensive back coach, University of Kentucky. Uh, here we have Zaquan Frazier, uh, better known as Zay. Um, he comes to us from Cedartown, Georgia, by way of Coffeeville, Kansas Junior College. Again, we talked about our need to address length in this class. Uh, 6'4 corner, former receiver. Um, as you can see here, extremely long, extremely fast. Um, does a great job of tracking the football and going to be uh, uh, the saving grace of the racer back there getting that ball on the ground. But you get a chance to see him run. Here you get a chance to see his length to change direction. For a longer guy, you see he's sudden and then he's physical at the point of contact. A uh, young man really, really excited about um, doing a good job here at the line of scrimmage just staying square and press technique um, and getting the chance to use that length, go clear that shoulder and get that ball off the receiver. Um, Zay, 
again, was a former receiver in high school. Um, it was only his second year playing the position of corner, so he's still figuring it out, still learning, just scratching the surface. Here you get a chance to see him red zone technique, getting connected, using that length, being physical with the receiver, and then getting it off of him, getting the PBU. Uh, he was also an all-conference player uh, at Coffeeville and, uh, and led his team uh, to a great record in the regular season. You can see he's strong at the point at the top of the routes, able to sit his hips down and, again, make plays on the football. Again, that length is something that we wanted to address, uh, and Zay definitely does that, man. He's an extreme competitor, really excited about what he'll add to the room, see him finishing plays, and when he gets an opportunity to make plays on the football, he definitely does it. Really excited about what Zay will bring to the group. He'll have an opportunity to come in mid-year and go compete from day one. Eric Wolford, offensive line coach here at University of Kentucky, taking a look at uh, Keontae Goodwin. He's a uh, Obviously, the guy here at left tackle, you can see from the start, the guy has tremendous power in his body. Uh, we all know about his size. He's an enormous man, but you can see here the power that he has in his body. Uh, more impressive is he, he's a guy that likes to finish blocks, and you can see that it comes naturally to him. Once again here, you can see him here pulling. You can see his athletic ability about getting out and running in space. Here he is right here. You know, he looks like he's running 100 meter stride for stride with the running back. So one of the things that we looked at when I was at the 49ers is, is can the guy run? You know, when we talked about drafting people, can the guy run? So right here he is at the high school level stride for stride with a running back. And this is a guy that weighs 350 pounds, six foot seven, you know, somewhere like that. And, you know, one of the things we, we always talk about with Goody is, is you can see when he plays that he's a heavy handed guy. He's a guy that knocks you back. He can move you off the spot. He's got tremendous length. And what we love most is, is he loves to finish guys. So you can see there, uh, a lot of guys would just say, okay, I block my guy and wait for the next play. He likes to finish guys. That's what we're looking for. Those are all the things that uh, will make him a great player here at the University of Kentucky. You can see here on the goal line, takes the guy off the line of scrimmage here and takes him out all the way through the end zone. And basically this, this guy lands outside the end zone. So that's not easily done. It doesn't matter who you're playing and what you're matched up against. That's a, a powerful man right there, moving a guy off the spot against his will, taking him where he doesn't want to go. Uh, Keontae Goodwin, the sky's the limit with this guy. He can uh, obviously be as good as anybody that's ever played uh, here at the University of Kentucky. More importantly, he can be a guy that could have a 10, 12 year career in the National Football League. But once again, you see him here running, right here, chasing the running back. Most offensive linemen will be back here, you know, grabbing a popcorn or worrying about what they're going to get from the snack stand. You can see here, this guy likes to play with effort, likes to strain his body and play hard at the second level. Tremendous upside with this guy. It's one of the biggest days in college football. You got it. It's National Signing Day. This is close to being a remember this moment for Josh Allen. He seems to be a, a, a very dynamic back. He can definitely add something to, uh, to the running back room. Give Kentucky and Mark Stoops a lot of credit because he developed it. And you know everything you need to know about this young man. He was selected to play in the Army All-America game. Well, Big Dog, it's been another whirlwind recruiting season. Uh, uh, myself and the Big Blue Nation, our staff can't thank you enough. You sacrifice a lot of time, work extremely hard um, the entire year, uh, as well as uh, the rest of our coaches. I have to give a shout out to the whole group. Mm -hmm. um, and guys worked exceptionally hard, and especially you. So what, what do you think about this class? Well, first and foremost, I just want to say, I know the Big Blue Nation is excited that you came back, which is never going nowhere anyway. That's right. But uh, I think every year, you know, when you go out and recruit, I always tell people this, I tell parents, I know you personally. So when I go recruit for the head coach, I know what you're really about. And uh, I think a lot of our other coaches, you know, it's a kind of family atmosphere. So Everybody knows what Coach Stoops is about, and, and we yeah. go sell that message and try to bring guys yeah. to this place. Well, I think that's a, a big thing we have, you know, the continuity. You and I have been together for nine years. Uh, the staff, again, you know, you deserve so much credit because you are kind of like the glue that holds our team. And
recruiting classes mm -hmm. together. But uh, I got to give a shout out to the whole group because yes. they work so hard. Uh, but I think the continuity of our staff is a big reason why we continue to have success mm -hmm. and people come in and know that it's authentic right. and and we're not uh, fake. What we tell them is the truth. And, uh, and I think a big piece of that is the time you yeah. spend. I know you, you're the type of guy, mm -hmm. you're on the phone at 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, whatever it takes, uh, you know, uh, all the time sacrificing time mm -hmm. you know which is our most <clears throat> valuable asset we have is is time mm -hmm. and we have to give a lot of that up for recruiting and you have to be very unselfish so i think that's one of the big reasons why we have such good success yeah and just to piggyback off of that you know you gotta get a lot of credit to chase heike uh yeah. them guys we had a real big recruiting weekend and man that might be one of the biggest we've had here and it yeah. went very smooth you're right and uh the way the recruiting calendar is right now for all the folks, you know, with the, the portal the way it is and with the early signing period, it makes it rather complicated right. in, in December. And it makes us, uh, you know, incredibly busy. Right. And then you start adding guys in and all that and Chase and his crew in the recruiting <laughs> office uh, just held those weekends just seamless. And yeah. uh, we had so many people coming and going and we got to make sure we spend the time with each of them. Uh, but that that's where, you know, you have to give a shout out to them and, and mm -hmm. the whole group because uh, it was an incredible mm -hmm. effort uh, during December. You know, the big. Thing uh, was going out and hitting some needs, you know, yeah. we, we, you know, for us, it always starts on the lines, you know, you got to mm -hmm. continue to always recruit uh, the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. And uh, we certainly hit a home run with that. And I felt a big need to get some skill, uh, both at the wide receiver position and yes. the cornerback position and, you know, deep, deep backfield. And uh, we certainly hit those needs. You see, I'm laughing because I remember 2013, you, yeah. after we played the SEC schedule, yeah. you came to my office, it was like, I want long guys. That's right. And it's like every yeah. every year, it's like whatever the flavor is for the lead that year. Yeah. Now it's like we need speed. And yeah. we went and got two fast guys that probably can even run track here. Yeah. And then we had a dynamic guy, a local guy. We have another big time guy out of yeah. that state down the street. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, it's really been, uh, man, the great thing about the recruiting part, and you do a really good job of just being managing and saying, hey, this is what we need. We go out and hit them needs, and I think every recruiting year we, we come back, I think you come back as a leader satisfied. Yeah, I definitely uh, feel really good. You mentioned definitely speed. We had to get some speed, but always we're looking for length. And yes. uh, I really feel like we got some good length at uh, both the interior positions and mm -hmm. on the perimeter. Uh, we got length, which will really help yeah. us. And I, I would like to say this. Uh, you, you made a quote, I think it was the other day. You, we did not run kids out of here. Uh, yeah. It was more like, hey, if, if a kid wants to stay here, the transfer portal is a new thing. Right. And some kids, you know, they may pretty much go somewhere else and play when they have opportunity. But it was never like, hey, we want you to leave. Uh, I mean, you told every one of them guys they could stay here if they wanted to. Yeah, without a doubt. I want to give them the, the option. Yes. With the portal, kids have an option. They mm -hmm. could stay here and be a great member of our team, maybe help us on scout team. They may help on special teams. Yes. They may be a backup, a role player, but they have a position yes. here. Yes. That is totally up to them. Or they can enter the portal and try to go somewhere where they can yes. get on the field. And uh, that's up to the players. I would never uh, just take a scholarship from a young man. I would never do that. Yep. Um, I'll take care of them and treat these kids the way I'd want somebody to treat my own son. Yep. You know, another uh, big point for me is uh, when I put you in Kentucky a few years yeah. back. And, uh, you know, it's such an important piece for us. And, um, you know, we've done another uh, really good job of, of recruiting the state. That's mm -hmm. always our number one, number one priority. And then we expand to Ohio, our bread and butter. Mm -hmm. But uh, you've really done a great job in Kentucky once again. I gotta be honest, when you did that in 18, you know, I like being in Ohio a lot. And it was like, you know, I really need you in Kentucky. And I got to tell you, it's really been an honor to recruit the state. Got to know a lot of people yeah. here going down to the, you know, Louisville and stuff like that. Uh, you, you'll be amazed how many Kentucky fans are even there. Right. So if, I think that's always going to be important. And I think you stated this before, high school football is getting better and better in the state. Yep. So we keep producing more. I think next year there may be six or seven power five guys that can play here. Yeah, there's no doubt. It's a uh, number one priority for us. 
it was really great ho hosting the uh, playoff games here yes. and the state championship games. I know it's always fun for us to be able to go out there and watch them play. And uh, the football is getting better and better. And uh, greatly appreciate the coaches and the players. And uh, we always have an open invitation here at the University of Kentucky for the state. Coach, this is a thing that I really like to talk about is our recruiting develop. Uh, you know, we can use Josh Allen. That's the poster child. But there's been many guys that even came through here and became good college football players who became starters and went on to the NFL. Uh, I can look at Benny Snell, who was a low three star. Uh, Jamin Davis was a low three star. And I just really, the, the greatest thing that I take out of this when I go recruit for this university is how good of teachers you have on the staff. Yep. And our strength staff don't get enough credit. Yeah, you, you're exactly right. Um, you know, without a doubt, our, our staff, you know, is a big piece of the development. Mm -hmm. but. You go down to the weight room and, it, and yeah. it, it, man, it starts there. They are really incredible yeah. in that room. And we talk about it a lot in recruiting, mm -hmm. but I don't think, uh, you know, throughout the, the the state, you know, it gets enough credit uh, because certainly if you look at nationally and you're the, you're the liaison with the NFL scouts mm -hmm. and I know how much respect oh, our strength and conditioning team has, um, you know, throughout the national yes. football league. And, um, you know, for us, uh, you know, that's just a big piece of who we are. And, and, you know, when we mean it, when we talk about developing them mm -hmm. in all areas of their life and you go down to Jason Cummings and mm -hmm. what we do with the oh, leadership yeah. development, you go to, to strength and conditioning mm -hmm. and then you go to the position coaches and how much time uh, we spend mm -hmm. uh, with with analyzing people's strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. and trying to get better at it. And I'm, that's something I'm really proud of, because, as you know, we're doing better in recruiting now. When we first got here, yeah. we had to take, you know, guys and turn them into uh, terrific SEC yes. players, and uh, we've done that a lot, and uh, that's something I'm very proud of. I was talking to a guy, uh, Cowboys, just the other day, and he was taking us back to 2013, and he said he noticed 13, and then we came back 14 and 15. He said, man, these guys are going to do something because the bodies are changing. Yeah. They, they recruit yeah. some different guys. And, and once again, I got to throw credit out to Coach Ed and, and yeah. Coach Hill. It's like a different culture down there. It is. My son works down there, and he'll, like, I'll be like talking to him and they like, he can't even look at me and talk unless they give him permission to talk. That's right. So it's, it's different yeah. down there. Like you say, Coach Ed is the He's head the head coach. coach. The He's the head coach in the spring. <laughs> I don't mess with Coach Ed or Coach Hill. Yeah. They run the weight room. And if a player tries to come up to me and complain about that, I said, well, you better go talk to them because yes. uh, I'm not going down there. No, you know? no, <laughs> so no. they do a terrific job. And I mean that with love and respect because uh, it's really good for the head coach to know he has somebody down there that is in full control. Right. No doubt. You know, the other thing that that, um, you know, I'm very proud of is we've done a nice job. The rules are what they are, yeah. but the transfer portal or a highly uh, rated recruit coming out of high school, yes. um, you know, in, in that we, we still can continue to, to, to develop them. Uh, Darian Kennard is a guy that jumps out at me that I remember when you were recruiting him and I, I was blown away that we had an opportunity to yeah. sign him because he was just absolutely unbelievably impressive coming mm -hmm. out of high school and physical. But then also in the portal, you know, we've had great success with the portal. And I always love that when we were bragging on the weight room, but it's so true. The guys come in from other programs and talk about how much yes. they're getting better and yes. how much they're being developed, even yes. in a short amount of time. Yes. Uh, and, and prime example is a hometown kid. Uh, I know Wandell wouldn't mind yeah. us talking about this, but I remember he came to me after three weeks in the weight room. He said, man, coach, he said, these guys are good. He said, I feel faster. I'm, I feel more fluent and I think he put on about eight to nine pounds of muscle yeah. while he's here. And he, uh, he's definitely faster. Yeah. And you look at, I'm not going to say no names, but you look at a kid we got from the portal and coming from another high traditional program. And I mean, our O line looked yeah. totally different than him. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's safe to say that uh, when they come here, they're going to get developed yes. and put on some mass and put on some strength, mm -hmm. and uh, that's something that we notice. And uh, you know, it's 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 been fun for us to yeah. help uh, these young young men yes. continue to get better and make some big jumps, even in a short amount of time. Coach, I know the one thing always is always call it your pool pit. You always send the messages out that week to you know whatever you want to get out, and you know as. Packing the stadium was another big thing. Uh, yeah. You know, we talked about, and, and I'm going to use Wandale again, two, two subjects. When, our, when the BBN is positive, even if a kid don't come here, yeah. and if they don't bash that kid, yeah. uh, that played a big part in a kid coming back home because he really still felt the love yeah. of people really supporting him. 
What do you yeah, think about that? Yeah, I think that's a, a great point. You know, the Big Blue Nation is such a positive influence yes. and can help us so much take this program to another level. I said it last summer and we, we, we had a really good year and I continue to feel this way. I feel like we're right on the verge, can take it to another oh, level yeah. quickly. And the BBN plays a big part of that. We continue to need that support. And it starts with packing uh, Kroger Field and having them show up in a big way. And, you know, continue to support these young men. You know, with the name, image, and likeness rules and regulations the way they are right now, yeah. it could really benefit us because the people care so much about these players. And uh, we continue to ask for your support. No uh, these players leave it on the field for us. That's yeah. one thing about our teams. They play hard. We may not always play perfect, yes. but we play exceptionally hard. And I think it's because the BBN, we yes. all have so much respect yes. and admiration for yes. our fan base. And I know we do as a staff and our players do. So continue to support these young men. I ask you for that. You know, I just to piggyback off of that. You know, I know you've been a part of a lot of big games, atmospheres. You know, I've mm -hmm. been in Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. That Florida and LSU game back to back. I think we even remember after the Florida game, I, I, I went to your office. And I just sat in the chair. You came in there. Yeah. We were just exhausted because <laughs> from the energy of the, of yeah. the BBN, and it was yeah. just so magnificent to see that. I really do think, Coach. With this crowd and the way the support has been, we really can't take it to the next level. We are very close. There's no doubt. We need to continue to push forward, and uh, we thank you for what you've done, and we look forward for your uh, continued support.